Let's go ahead and do three mechanical energy calculations. The first one, which deals with kinetic energy, has me driving in the forerunner, which has a mass of 2100 kilograms, initially going five meters per second. I then speed up to 10 meters per second, and you're asked to find the change in kinetic energy. That's important. Anytime we're finding the change, which I've chosen to underline, you're going to take the final value and subtract the initial value. Now, when I plug in the equation for each of these, I am in the habit of factoring out the mass. You do not have to factor out mass if you do not want to. Now, the change in kinetic energy, when we plug in numbers, we get a value of 7.9 times 10 to the fourth joules. Recall a joule is a derived unit for energy. Now, in the second part of this scenario, I'm speeding up another five meters per second. So I'm going now from 10 meters per second to 15 meters per second. You're asked to compare and contrast the change in kinetic energy to this new change in kinetic energy. But one might think that they would be the same. My mass hasn't changed and I'm increasing five meters per second in both scenarios. Let's explore this a little bit. So using the exact same equation and methodology and now plugging in our new numbers of 10 meters per second and 15 meters per second, we get a change in kinetic energy to be 1.3 times 10 to the fifth. Wow, that's a lot more than we got in the first scenario, which still seems a bit odd given that the change in speeds were identical between part A and part B. Let's look at this graphically. I have kinetic energy on the y-axis. I have velocity on the x-axis. I also have increments of 5, 10, and 15 meters per second on the x-axis. So if we look and compare these changes, so look at the y-axis here. This change here was from zero to five. We were asked initially to do from five to 10. Whoa, that's a big difference. And then in part B, we were asked to look at this change from 10 to 15. So it seems to be increasing even though these increases in velocity are the same, i.e. five meters per second. So let's go ahead and do some mathematical reasoning. Let's look at our proportionalities in the uh, equation here. And we can state that the kinetic energy is directly proportional to mass. So if I double the mass, I double the kinetic energy. However, let's look at kinetic energy with respect to velocity. Kinetic energy is proportional to the velocity squared. And that's a really big deal there, guys, because we are dealing with an exponential relationship. I wonder how you would linearize this graph. Why don't you come talk to me about that first thing tomorrow morning? Now, in our second scenario, dealing with gravitational potential energy, I am ascending out of a massive cave chasm. In fact, it's 180 meters deep. That's almost four Statues of Liberty st stacked on top of each other. And you're asked, how much mechanical energy do I gain halfway up the ascent, and there I am. So, first things first, our equation for gravitational potential energy, mass multiplied by gravity multiplied by the change in height. And that change in height here is 90 meters relative to a defined zero line. It's arbitrary. You choose where to put this zero line, and you want to try to think about it so it makes sense. So here, if you're asked about how much mechanical energy I gain from ascending from the bottom to halfway up, it makes sense to put the zero line at the bottom of the cave. Now this is a plug and chug. 
with 90 kilograms being my mass, the acceleration due to gravity, and of course my change in height from my zero line, I went up 90 meters. That gives you an overall value of 8.1 times 10 to the fourth joules. Now I wonder what would happen if for some reason you chose to put your zero line halfway up the cave. I wonder how that would work out. In our final calculation, which deals with elastic potential energy, I have a spring. And you're given the spring constant to be 80 newtons per meter. Now, as you can see in the video, I am taking that spring and stretching it a given distance. You're asked to calculate the stored energy, which is the elastic potential energy in the spring in its stretched state. So we're going to use this equation in which K is dealing with the spring constant, in this case, 80 newtons per meter, and the X is dealing with the displacement of the spring. So how far is the spring extended or compressed? That's what that value is. So from the video, you can see that I am extending the spring approximately 10 centimeters. Now, putting this information into the equation and remembering to convert centimeters into meters, SI units for this equation, we get that the stored potential energy in its stretched state is 0.4 joules. Now, the more interesting question is, how far do I need to extend the spring if I want to double the stored energy. So doubled, I want to increase the stored energy by two times. So you should be thinking about the number two, which means we're going to have to look at our proportionalities where the spring potential energy is directly proportional to the spring constant. So if I were to double K, I could double the energy. But in order to double K, I would need to take my spring, put it away, get another spring with a spring constant of 160 newtons per meter, and that will give me twice the energy as long as I extend it 10 centimeters or 0.1 meters. But we can't do that in this problem because I'm extending this same spring. It specifically says how much further would I need to extend it if I wanted to double the stored energy, which means we're looking at this, where the uh, elastic potential energy, which I use interchangeably with spring potential energy, is proportional to the distance the spring is stretched squared. This is what we want to explore. The question becomes, what number can I put in here that when I square it, I get two, because that's what I'm trying to get. What number do I put in here that when I square it gives me two? Well, that number would be the square root of two, because the square root of two squared is two. All right, so this means that I'm going to need to extend the spring, the square root of times two further. Well, the square root of 2 is approximately 1.41. And if I multiply 1.414 times 10 centimeters, I get the answer. So by increasing it by the square root of 2, I would need to extend the spring 14 centimeters. Now, you might have thought initially, oh, you extend it from 10 to 20 to double. No, you do not because the energy is exponentially related to the extension or the compression of the spring. So we've done now a, a number of calculations with mechanical energy. And I think it's time to go ahead and begin to explore the conservation of energy. And I'll see you guys in class.